So I've set up my pianos and organs and all my Genesis keyboards here to show how you get the original Genesis sounds or very close to them with modern day equipment because using the old Genesis equipment is a problem because stuff like that is very expensive, hard to get hold of and not very reliable these days because it's so old. So the first thing we come to is the piano and Genesis used a number of different piano sounds. In the early days they used a thing called the Honer Pianet and I'll show you what that sounds like. You can use any reasonable digital piano um, equivalent uh, and what I've done here is to get the Honer Pianet sound which was used on Supper's Ready and um, the first few albums I, I combined uh, uh, two electric pianos, one that sounds a bit like a Rhodes and one that sounds a bit like a Wurlitzer because the Pianet is somewhere between the two and if you listen to this you'll get an idea. This is a bit from Supper's Ready. And you'll probably recognise that bit from Supper's Ready just as the piano comes in. Of course there's another piano sound that's very familiar with Genesis which is the RMI piano which was uh, used later and for that uh, the RMI had various presets including um, uh, that you could select uh, piano was one of them and another one was um, a harpsichord -y, -y sound um, and um, you could you could mix these sounds together to give this unique sound. Now often also Tony Banks used to use uh, chorus to great effect so I'll add a bit of chorus and we'll see what that does. Uh... Tony Banks for the synth sounds used uh, very often an ARP Pro soloist for a lot of the classic Genesis songs of the 70s. Uh, and the ARP was a preset synthesizer basically, but you could do a lot of very um, expressive sounds because you could use aftertouch, which means you could, by the way you played the note and held on to the notes, you, you could get various effects like vibrato and portamento and that. So it's very important to use the aftertouch effect of a modern keyboard to, to try and simulate this in the In The Cage solo. You see the You can see the difference for the vibrato effects you can get with aftertouch. Basically what you want is an organ that allows you to uh, recreate all the Hammond sounds that Tony Banks used. There are lots of Hammond clones out there. Um, and this one uh, allows you to do some very nice uh, things. The usual uh, percussion, percussion sounds which gives it that attack sound that Banks used which I'll demonstrate. And um, you want some different uh, uh, rotary speaker settings but most of the time after uh, the first three albums Tony Banks didn't use uh, the Leslie speaker instead he had a very interesting combo which I'll show you here he had a chorus pedal and he had a MXR phase 100 pedal and particularly this MXR phase 100 had some unique um, sounds and between the two of them he, he recreated a kind of Leslie sound but without a Leslie speaker, these Leslies were these revolving, old revolving speakers. And if I play a chord here from the Lamb, uh, you'll recognise the effect. This is uh, from In The Cage, of course. Uh, the Memetron, which I bought from uh, Mannequin Electronics in Germany. It just arrived yesterday. I'm very proud of it. Um, fantastic sounds. What, what I've got here is I've got um, a preset Memetron Genesis, which I'm just going to load. There we go, loading file. I, I chose to buy the Memetron rack module, um, as you can see, um, attached to a MIDI controller keyboard. The reason I did this was that um, basically you can have six sounds on the rack module but you only get your basic three on the keyboard version although of course you can load and change additional ones. For Genesis it's quite useful to have the six because you want uh, uh, tr the Genesis Triple Eight Choir, uh, you want the uh, sound for Watcher of the Skies which is a unique uh, mix of uh, strings and brass on the right hand and a bass sound on the left hand 
uh, and you want um, the violins for songs like Fountain of Samarsis and, you, and Firth of Fifth, and you also want brass, uh, a sound called Brass B, which was a Mellotron sound um, that was used at the end of Supper's Ready. Uh, so those are the kind of minimum four. Uh, you also need flutes if you're going to play the Battle of Epping Forest. So there's quite a lot of uh, beautiful Mellotron sounds. The Mellotron was a massive uh, instrument, big instrument, using real tapes uh, and was pr probably one of the earliest sampling instruments. Um, there was an earlier one called the Chamberlain, but the Mellotron basically was a, a, a British-made um, uh, tape sampling keyboard, which Tony used... Um, on, on many Genesis albums to create uh, some lush uh, sounds. Uh, now, using a real Mellotron, they're very expensive to buy, they're difficult to maintain uh, because of the uh, mechanical nature. Uh, and I, until recently, I used to use a laptop running a program uh, of a, a virtual instrument called a, a an Mtron, which was fine, except that for live performance, that's not really the way to go, I think, in case your laptop crashes. So um, I had been using it for a while. But uh, the Memotron, they've, they've resampled uh, a lot of the sounds and, and they're really tremendous. So I'm going to show you some of these sounds. Um, and again, you can use any MIDI controller keyboard. Uh, Let's first demonstrate the famous Watcher of the Skies sound, which um, much loved sound, um, very powerful opening. <laughs> on the Memotron you need is the choir sound which is a very famous uh, Genesis sound uh, very characteristic um, it's used in lots of places like for instance uh, the end of Afterglow <laughs> beautiful sound the strings sound and uh, the triple violin sound Of the and finally the um, brass B sound which is used in uh, Supper's Ready both in the um, uh, uh, Willow Farm and at the end of Supper's Ready though 